it's epic, it's 4G, and yes, you can in fact touch it. It has quite possibly the longest name of any wireless piece of equipment I've ever dealt with in my entire life. The Samsung Galaxy S2 Epic 4G Touch. Say that three times fast, you're gonna be out of oxygen pretty quickly. It's coming to Sprint on Friday, the 16th, for $199.99. Got the demo, let's do an unboxing. I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com, and special thanks to our friends both at Sprint for hooking us up with a review unit, and at Best Buy Mobile for hooking us up with a lot of cool phones like this. We can give to you in the One Paul Bandit game. When you go into Best Buy Mobile, you're gonna walk out working with this phone. They're gonna help you set up your email, your web. You're gonna walk out with everything on this phone, good to go. That's part of Best Buy Mobile's walkout working program. Let's unbox this sucker and see, is this Galaxy S2 really where it's at? Or have too much time passed since the Galaxy S2 launched internationally? Let's go find out. This thing seriously has the longest name of any tech product I've ever reviewed. The full name is the Samsung Galaxy S2 Epic 4G Touch. I'm gonna shorten it and call it the Ep Touch for this video, the Ep Touch. So the F-Touch is here. Actually, I can't really say that because that just sounds weird. But anyway, there's the full name. You can see the box here, Super AMOLED on the back. We'll see what comes in it. It comes with a device, comes with a battery, charger, USB cable, get started guide, English, Spanish, information booklet, and wireless recycling envelope. So you can see the device here. It comes out on Sprint on the 16th for $199.99. And this, you know, at least internationally, and arguably, you know, just across the world, has been the flagship Android phone this year. I mean, this thing blows it out of the water when it comes to quadrant standard scores, any sort of benchmarking scores. So it's really nice to see it coming to the States. But there are some differences on this one. You know, it has the dual core processor, but it does have a 4.52 inch display. So a much larger display. And we're going to leave the phone over here while we pull it out of the, uh, out of the box. So 4.52 inch Super AMOLED Plus display. Still has that gorgeous Super AMOLED Plus display. We uh, love on the Samsung devices. You can see in the box here, we get the typical AC adapter module. I'm gonna rip it out so you can take a look here. A little boxy AC adapter module. Very similar to what comes with the Galaxy Tab. And then you can see a typical Samsung USB, micro USB charging cord, which my cat will love to eat. So when I keep it at home, I'll be sure to take that and leave it in the box. So you can see in here, it comes with our instruction manuals. Looks like a Sprint bag. Getting started. Vamos. Important information for the Galaxy S2 Epic 4G Touch. I'm sorry, the 4G is in the middle, so Epic 4G Touch. The Ep Touch is all, all the goodies you need right there in the box, ready to go. But enough of that, you don't really care about the box that much. At least most of you don't. Let's take a look at the actual device. You have a dual core 1.2 gigahertz Exynos processor over here. So you do have a larger display though. You have, and you can see my cup of coffee over there from earlier. We'll wait for this to boot up. 8 megapixel camera on the back, and you can see the camera placement's a little bit differently. It's not, or different. It's not side by side, it's uh, vertical. You can see the camera and the flash there. 8 megapixels. Watch it start up here so you can see gorgeous display. If, even though it's a larger display, 4.52 inches, still an absolutely gorgeous display. And a very thin device, despite being a little bit bigger in the hand. You know, this one is, I can feel the size difference between this and the 4.3 uh, display, 4.3 inch display that came on the international version. But uh, it's a nice. Definitely a nice device. And here's our micro SD card slot. You can see the battery door comes off pretty easily. Power button's over here on the right side. Then you have your volume rocker over here. 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on the top and micro USB charging port on the bottom. Now let's go ahead, and I know you hate when I do this, but I can't remember what the battery is. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out. And yes, you can hate in the comments. 1,800 milliamp hour batteries. We're gonna start it up again. We're gonna, it's just for a test. We're gonna see how this thing performs from a cold boot. 1,800 milliamp hour Battery. So it's a nice large battery, so with that nice large display and those nice awesome 4G capabilities, it's nice to know that the battery is at least relatively decent. You know, I'm assuming, I'm guessing with an 1800 milliamp hour battery, you can make it through most of the day with moderate use. So something to, uh, something to keep in mind there, 1800 milliamp hour battery. You have a front facing camera as well on the sucker up here at the top, and you can see it's changed from the international version. You have four capacitive buttons down here instead of the, uh, the physical button and the two capacitors on each side. But you can see how fast this device is, just out of the box. Very, very quick. Sexy Galaxy S2, and I hate to use that word on phones, but it really is. You can see how quick, and it's still starting up and doing its thing right now, but you can see performance-wise how awesome it is. And out of the box, here's what the programs look like. You get all share, Google Books. You can see TouchWiz 4.0 on this device. A little bit of a difference, actually a lot of bit of a difference from 3.0, which is what came on the Droid Charge, the Epic 4G, and a lot of the older uh, Galaxy devices. You can see the uh, border behind the apps are gone. You know, that, that box is no longer there. It's that colorful box that kind of resembled iOS, but they do still scroll from side to side. You can just see the fluidity of this device and how much faster it is. It runs Android 2.3 out of the box, and like I said, it has TouchWiz 4.0. So it has Keys or Kai's Air, you know how you want to pronounce it. And then over here, you have Samsung's Media Hub. You have uh, NASCAR Sprint Cup Mobile. You have the Social Hub, and these are all the different hubs 
that come pre-installed. You have the social hub, and actually that, I guess, is the only one that comes pre-installed on this one. But you see some Sprint stuff, NASCAR Sprint Cup Mobile, Sprint Hotspot, Sprint ID, Sprint Mobile, Music Plus, and on a non-Sprint note, Polaris Office is over there. And then Sprint Radio, Sprint TV, and Movies as well, and Visual Voicemail. So you get quite a few Sprint goodies pre-installed out of the device, or out of the box, rather, on this device. And then, of course, thanks to Sprint, they do a good job of listening to their customers. So we can go into Applications, and you can go over here, and we'll see NASCAR, for example. You don't want it, you can uninstall it. Pretty quick and easy to uninstall. But you can just see how quick this device is moving. No lag whatsoever. I'm going to messaging so you can take a look at the new interface. Much like the international version of the Galaxy S2, it's very similar here. You do get swipe and you get the, uh, the Samsung keypad out of the box. And you can download some additional favorites like gingerbread keyboard, Swift key, and more out of the Android market. And again, quick transition, relatively quick from portrait to landscape. Now because you have that nice big 4.5 inch display, super easy to type in landscape mode, although I don't care for the, uh, the Samsung keypad. Fox is happy. I said that the other day. Quick Round Fox is, let's see, Quick Round Fox is thirsty. How about that? Quick Round Fox is thirsty. And again, easy transition over into landscape as well. Let's take a look at browsing. Now, interestingly enough, you know, it's running on 3G right now. It is a 4G capable device, and you can see all these nice shortcuts in the notifications bar, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, sound, and 4G. So I can kick on 4G pretty easily, but Sprint's uh, 3G has been pretty abysmal as of late. The speeds have been absolutely terrible. And I'm seeing some of this on this device as well, unfortunately. So that's one of those things if you're, you know, your speed demon and you don't really want to turn it on 4G because you don't want to waste the battery life, you're you know, looking for a consistent 3G experience. Right now they're having some network issues, so something to, uh, to keep in mind. But let's load up Phone Dog and see how long it takes for Phone Dog if we can actually get it to fully, uh, fully load up here. And while we're doing that, we'll take another look at the back of the device. A little bit different over here in terms of the battery door. Not a huge difference, but you can tell there's a little bit of a hump difference down here. Just the way it feels in the hand is, uh, is slightly different. The phone dog's loading up right now. It's taking its time though, but you can see how it feels in the hand in comparison to something a little bit more narrow. Sorry for that bump. Like the Motorola Droid Bionic. You can see there how it fits in the hand in comparison. So you can see a little bit of a size difference. Let's get this display back on. And wait for the phone dog to uh, to load up. Now you do have your windows over here. When you go out, you see how those easy transitions bring it right out. This processor performs really well. I can open up a secondary window and I can go back over here to Windows and go to Phone Dog. I'm going to go ahead and close that out. But I can go back to Phone Dog when I'm ready. And it's uh, not fully loaded, so I'm not sure why I did that. But you can just see, again, even though it's not fully loaded, how the pinch to zoom performance is very smooth, very clean. And again, I know the page isn't fully loaded. Let's see if we can actually get 4G to kick on on this device. 4G, it's Kind of a rough area, coverage area for 4G, uh, but let's see if we can get it. Maybe we can have a little bit of better luck with the browser test, because I like to do that before we sign off. But it's a good looking device, you know, it's unchanged in terms of menu largely from, okay good, it did connect. Uh, it's unchanged largely from the international version, I mean you just see a lot of design differences like capacitive buttons, a larger display, and then of course the Sprint pre-installed applications, but just nice to see it in the States and nice to see it subsidized because I love this phone, but I rarely recommended it to people because it was 700 and something dollars to uh, to bring in from overseas. So you can see once 4G's kicked on, it's nice and fast. You can see how quick and easy the pinch to zoom is on this device. So just a beautiful device, a lot of screen real estate thanks to the 4.5 inch display. And again, it's coming in at a really competitive price point at $199.99. So again, you know, big display, easy to read stuff and transitions are nice and fast. Much more coverage to come on the Epic 4G Touch, or the EpTouch, as I like to call it on PhoneDog.com. Be sure to like us on Facebook, Facebook.com slash PhoneDog. Learn more information about the Epic Touch both on the PhoneDog site and on Facebook, but be sure to enter our contest. It's the greatest tech giveaway ever. We're doing it right now. All you have to do is go over the page, like our page, and then click on sweepstakes at Facebook.com slash PhoneDog. Follow me on Twitter as well, PhoneDog underscore Aaron. Let me know what you think about this device. Let me know what you want to see in the review. Let me know if you have any questions and more. Again, phone dog underscore Aaron, and on Facebook at my personal page at facebook.com slash phone dog AB. I'm out to test the app touch. Let's see if this thing holds up to the high-end devices on Sprint like the Photon and the Evo 3D. Keep it locked for more coverage, and we'll see you next time.